Let's move to part two. Now, this is going to feel really similar, right? Because we are finding the location of another point. We're going to use the equation of a line. In this case, it's the pink line, the normal line. Uh, and then we're going to substitute in x equals zero because n, just like t, is on the y-axis, okay? So this is hopefully going to feel a bit familiar, um, but there are some minor tweaks, right? So remember, it's the equation of the normal that gives us n. By the way, it's n for normal, in case you hadn't uh, noticed that. And so to find out the equation of the normal, I'm going to kind of review what I did before. You can see I, I use the equation of uh, a line using point and then gradient. Now the point is the same. The x1 and the y1 are going to match. The difference is this gradient, right? Remember how we were saying before the normal is perpendicular to the tangent line, right? So therefore, I can say the equation of, I'm going to use the same thing I said before, I could just say the equation of the normal, but because I've got names for the points on this line, I'm going to say line a n. When I go and do point gradient form, all the things that I said before about the point will remain the same. So I'm just going to take advantage of the fact that I can write the y minus 2a squared, I've got the x minus a over here, and the only thing that's different is the gradient of this line, the normal, right? Now, previously I used 4a, that was the gradient of the tangent. You may recall going back to coordinate geometry, this is like a couple of years ago now, if you're doing a question like this, when you've got two lines that are perpendicular, you can think of it either as you multiply their uh, gradients and you get an answer, a product of negative one. Alternatively, uh, I mean, this is a different way of looking at the same thing. The new gradient, the perpendicular gradient, is the negative reciprocal, right? Because if I say m1 times m2 equals negative 1, if their product is indeed negative 1, then the gradient of one of them will be the negative reciprocal of the other one. So in this case, I can do that pretty directly. Uh, I'll stay with green. I'm going to do this here. I'm going to say it's negative 1 over 4. A. Uh, that's the negative reciprocal, so I'm good to go. And now I just need to expand out and see what happens, right? Now, remember, in just like uh, we saw before, what I'm looking for is to let x equal zero. So in fact, I noticed at this point, I, I might not even expand just yet because I'm gonna expand, use this, uh, this x term here, but I don't need to worry about that x term. It's gonna be zero in a minute, right? So I'm just gonna go back and I'm gonna say, well, even though this is super messy, it's, it's in an unsimplified, like I haven't manipulated it at all from original point gradient form. I can say uh, to find n, let x equal zero, and it will actually do some of the work for me, right? I can go y minus 2a squared equals negative one over four a. This becomes zero, take away a. So there's one thing, one less thing to worry about, right? Uh, remembering that I do want the y coordinate, I'm just going to go ahead and start to uh, isolate that and make it the subject. So I'm going to get uh, negative 1 over 4a times negative a plus 2a squared. You can see me adding that to both sides. And then when I look at this, you can see the negatives are going to cancel and the a's are going to cancel. I've got an a on the numerator and an a on the denominator. So I just end up with 1 over 4 plus to a squared. Now, pause for a minute. I, I would normally instinctively say, that looks good, don't have to do any more simplifying to that. However, I then look back at the question and you can see they've phrased the y coordinate slightly differently. They've just put it all on one common denominator all over four. So therefore, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna say that's one over four plus eight a squared over four. You can see I multiplied the two a squared by four over four. So I'm pretty, pretty much done at this point, right? So I can say therefore n is at zero comma one plus eight a squared over four, full stop. Okay. So we're moving on to part three, and this is where it started to introduce this triangle business, right? So let's look back at the question. It says, show that the area of triangle TAN is equal to, and then, just like we've seen in parts one and two, they provide us with a solution uh, so that we know we don't need to go hunting for what that answer is, okay? So what's the best way to work out the area of triangle TAN? Well, I'm going to just go ahead and grab uh, let's make another copy of this, move it down a little bit. Yeah, I can fit it here. All right. 
Let's have a look at triangle TAN together. Might help if I just make it a little more obvious, like so. Well, that's that. Hooray, there we go. All right, so this triangle here, TAN, we can work out its area in lots of different ways. By this point in the course, you've learned trigonometry, um, you've learned all of your uh, formulas related to area um, in a triangle, and you can think about all of the stuff you learned even in year seven and eight. There's lots of different, pardon the pun, angles you can take on solving this problem. For me, when I look at this question, and by the way, if you don't want me to spoil it, you should pause and have a think for a minute because once I tell you the way I'm gonna do it, uh, it's really hard when you see someone or read someone else's solution, it becomes really hard to see your own solution through that and unsee the solution that you looked at that someone else showed you, right? So I'm, I'm kind of delaying here because uh, this is actually a point worth highlighting for if you're revising for exams and things like that, you have a go at a past paper, that's a great way to prepare, by the way, and do it under exam conditions, absolutely. But if you encounter a question, you're like, oh, I don't know how to do this question. A very instinctive thing is, well, let's look up the solutions. This was a past paper after all, the solutions are probably available. What I would say is use the solutions, but use them at your own risk and definitely don't look at the solutions too quick before you've given it a real go yourself because that can't unsee thing is, is a real danger, right? It really eliminates your ability to think carefully through the, the problem and uh, you, you miss uh, the value of the problem, which is kind of sweating and thinking hard and kind of beating your head against the wall sometimes to try and see the solution. Even though that work is, it, it doesn't feel nice. It, it's sort of, there's the word, the phrase for it uh, is it's cognitively dissonant. Uh, it doesn't feel good when you can't work out what the answer is, but that that work, that cognitive thinking work is actually what helps you learn, right? So I think I've stalled for time enough now. I'm gonna show you the way that I think is most obvious for this. If you look at this shape and you look at it sideways, um, I wonder if, I don't think, uh, can I? No, I don't think I can rotate this easily. Mm, I can flip it. That's not that useful, that's okay. What I'm gonna do is, um, you, you might need to turn your head a little bit, but I'm gonna think about this side here T, N. I'm gonna think about that as the base of the triangle, right? Triangles can be spun around any different direction, right? The base has to be one of the sides, but it really can be any side. Uh, we're used to thinking of the base as the, the bottom side, but of course, all you have to do is just look at it from a different direction and you see that any of them can be the base. The reason why this triangle, uh, rather this side, is the best choice, I think, for the base, is because the other piece of information you need to quickly work out the area of the triangle is its height. Now, we say height, that's actually shorthand for perpendicular height. Uh, we just don't like saying perpendicular because it's such a long word. And if you're looking at this diagram clearly, you can see that the perpendicular height for NT is really easy to work out. It's already been given to us. It's at right angles, this length in here. Right Now, if you can't quite see it, right, to make it really, really obvious, let me just highlight the fact that this length here is equal to the x-coordinate, A, that we have for capital A, right? So this perpendicular height is also little a. All that um, is left is to work out what this height is here. Now, uh, this is where, if, if it's not obvious to you how to work out this height, this is where I'm gonna pull out a trick which I often do in questions like this where there's lots of algebra flying around and it's the algebra that makes it hard to, to sort of see the logic, right? Let's suppose I wasn't thinking about this algebraically. So let's suppose I had some values, right? Let's imagine that three is, uh, sorry, n rather, is at the um, y coordinate three and t is at the y coordinate one, or rather negative one because it's below the axis, okay? Now if I'm going from three down to negative one, I hope that you can kind of see for yourself that the bottom is just going to be from negative one to zero, that's a unit, that's a one unit length, and then from zero, the origin up to three, that's three units in length, so it's three plus one, which is four, okay? So what I'm really doing is, I'm working out what this length is, then I'm adding it to this length, okay? Now, the top length is easy to do because all I need is, well, I need to do the three, right? But for this bottom length, this one down here, I actually need to take the absolute value of negative one, or if you like, I'm subtracting the negative, which gives me a positive, okay? All of this is very important because I'm going to use the y-coordinate of n, which I worked out up here, 
That is equivalent to the, the three in this situation. And then I'm gonna use the y coordinate of t, here it is right here. That's gonna be equivalent to the negative one because it's down here, right? So all I have to do is to say length and t. That's what I'm actually working out here. That is the, um, that's the base of the triangle even though it's oriented vertically, right? It's going to be equal to, what's the top part? It's one plus eight a squared on four. And then I'm gonna subtract the y coordinate of t, which we saw before, it's negative two a squared. So I'm gonna subtract negative two a squared, right? What's this gonna give us? Well, one plus eight a squared over four plus, this is gonna be two a squared, but I can, I can multiply that by four over four. That gives me one plus eight a squared plus another eight a squared all over four. So that's giving me one plus 16 a squared all over four. That's the length of nt. And I'm gonna use that to work out the area of triangle T A N. It's gonna be half times the base, which we just worked out. It's this uh, one plus 16 A squared all over four. That's the, the base of the triangle. And then I need the height, which we already saw before, is just going to be little a right there, okay? So I'm gonna multiply that all by a. So on the numerator, you can see I'm gonna get these terms. And on the denominator, I'm gonna get these terms. So that leaves me with a plus 16 a cubed all over eight. That's it. I'm pausing there and going back to the question to see, is this kind of what have I expected? Now, weirdly, a little bit, even though in uh, part two, they wanted it all as one fraction. In part three, they want these things separate. So fine, it's actually, you know, all good because you can see I've got exactly the answer I was hoping for. There's a over eight in the first part and then 16 divided by eight gives me that two a cubed as required. Okay.